Giulia Italia is starting uh, this Saturday with an individual time trial um, in Sicily. Um, and it's going to be a really good race, I think. A lot of time trial corners, about 65 kilometers of time trialing, and some pretty hard mountains towards the end. But I'm just going to go through like the start list very quickly uh, and, and then go through you know who's who. Um, but I'm just going to be speaking mainly GC wide in terms of the stages. Um, so if we go over now to the start list, you know, obviously like AG2R got normal GC, Andrew, Andrioli Giacatoli, I don't really see anyone. Obviously, it's starting to have Jakob Fulsang and Vlasov, both of them look really, really strong. Uh, again, Bahrain, they haven't confirmed their team, but no one really looks to go for GC. Same with Bardiani. So, you know, there's not too many GC men. Obviously, here we've got Rafael Maiga, he'll be going for GC. Zacharin said he's going for stages, so again, no. Uh, Kofidis, I don't, I don't really see any of these people going for GC, to be honest. Um, it looks like they've gone full lead out. A quick step got James Knox for GC. He's going to go well, I think. Um, and maybe Maznada might go GC, could go stages. Uh, EF. Um, they don't really have anyone for GC, really, um, to be honest. I, I can't see any of them doing that well. Um, I don't think Mike Woods is going, which is, is a bit odd. But if he is going, which I think he is supposed to go, so I don't know why it says he's not, um, then obviously he'll be there for GC. Uh, FDJ, again, full sprint squad. Israel, full sprint squad. Uh, Lotus Sedal, maybe Matthew Holmes for GC. Um, obviously, I'm a big fan of him, but I, I don't don't know 100%. Mission squad, obviously, going for Simon Yates. Um Again, Movistar, I don't really know. Maybe Heather Carotero is going to go, maybe, but I can't really see any of them going. Sergio Samitia, like, they've got a lot of solid riders, but I can't see any of them really standing up for GC. NTT going for Louis Mankies. He'll lose about 10 minutes in the TT. Uh, Garrett Thomas, obviously, going to be pretty strong. Kreisweig, Kelderman, Nibali. Um, and then for UAE, I guess they're going mainly for sprints with Gaviria. Maybe Brandon McNulty will do something, but I doubt it. And Binu Zabu KTM could go for Visconti. So, you know, a fair few T uh, GC riders, but, you know, the main ones, obviously, like Nibali Kelderman, Gary Thomas Christ, right? That'll be their main contenders. So we'll just go through the TTs quickly now. Um, there's 65 kilometers, as I said, so quite a lot. This first one, I don't predict too many gaps. I, I mean, Gary Thomas will put time into everyone, I think, I make, like, a decent time, apart from maybe Kelderman Christ, right? Um And, you know, all those are pretty similar. And obviously, at Yates is, is slightly worse. Mikey's is horrendous at TTs, generally. Um... I don't want to be rude, but like he's not that good at them. Um, and then you've also sort of got other smaller GC contenders who like Mike Woods. I mean, he's not small, but and Mike, I don't really see them doing much in the TT. Um, the next stage again, stage 14, individual time trial, not as big a gaps. Well, so probably bigger gaps, but not as big as they could be because you know you've got this 1k at 12 percent here, 2k at five and a half, 5.4 percent. Okay, that probably isn't much, but it's, it's more rolling than you expect. Um, so for sure, maybe not as big TT gaps. And this one, I think, really could be quite important. On paper, it looks, you know, pan flat, whatever. Obviously, that you know, it's, there'll be a couple. This doesn't look technical, but I'm assuming it'll be a slightly more technical. Um, but, you know, last day TTs are always uh, very hard uh, for riders. Roglic always blows up on them, um, as we've seen in, you know, pretty much every Grand Tour he's done apart from the Vuelta, um, because he didn't have a last, last week uh, TT. So, you know, I expect... Definitely some people to go really, really badly on the, in this TT, and I think it should be a really interesting spectacle. Well, now go to actually really early on is the first mountaintop finish. Um, I think it's a different way uh, that they've gone up Etna before, and some of the Etna stages, to be honest, have been pretty boring. Um, in 2017, they had an Etna stage, and then Jan Palanch won and also went into pink, but he wasn't really like it wasn't that exciting. There was a massive headwind. Zacharin had lost time before, but and gained a bit of time back, but that was. That wasn't anything exciting. And obviously Yates in twenty eight in 2019, sorry. No, 2018, sorry. Yeah, that's correct. 2018 also went on the attack and up net. And that was a bit more exciting. Um, you can see here it's it's like 3K at 9% is the last part of the climb. But it's a long old climb, 18, 19K at 7%. I don't expect huge time gaps. I don't think anyone's going to be, you know, going absolutely full at that point. But I can imagine, you know, people lose 30 seconds, you know, they, like, they haven't really done it. Maybe if they've lost a bit of time with the TT, they might try and make it up. But... You know, nothing, nothing too crazy. Um, but I still think it'll be a good one to watch. Maybe not, not the whole thing, but just the last climb will definitely be good to watch. Stage 15 is really the next mountain top finish. If we, if we look here, like there's obviously a couple here, like Rocasso, Rock, Rock, Rocarasso, but like it, it's just not hard enough, uh, in my opinion. Generally, a lot of these stages are hard, but not hard enough for GC wise. Um, obviously, Pian Cavallo we had in the 2017 Giro. Uh, Mikael Lander won that stage from the break, um, securing the King of the Mountains jersey. Um, and in terms of time gaps, they, they were pretty decent. Adam Yates lost a bit of time. Uh, De Moulin and Quintana finished similar-ish, and um, Pino also put a bit of time in that stage. So again, it's, it's a pretty hard finish. Um, 10k at 9%, obviously the Giro say 14k at 7.8%, which is true, but 
you know, the, the last part is, is quite hard. 10K at 9% is enough to put gaps if, you know, a team really needs to. Obviously, the preceding climbs, 9K at 6%, you know, that would be, be ridden at a nice 5 watts per kilo for those boys. Um, nothing too crazy, I reckon, these early climbs. And then the last one, if, if a team wants to make the difference, they could definitely do it on that stage. So stage 15 is definitely one to uh, tune in for the last climb, for sure. Um, so then we have stage 17, which is, you know, on paper doesn't look, doesn't look crazy, but it, it is just quite a hard stage. Like the final climb, okay, it's only 11k at 6%. So things might not happen straight away, but you could imagine, you know, at this time, you know, we're approaching the third week, or we'd be in the third week, and there's some pretty hard climbs here, like 21k at 6% goes up to 1700 meters. Then this again, 20.5k at 7%. Okay, they're not impossible climbs, but if you really wanted to, like, you know, if someone was struggling, I could imagine this being one of those days where it's going to be like break goes boring as, or GC guy starts to fade and it's full full gas action um, from minute one, which I think you know there's a there's a decent chance that that could happen. We then got stage twenty, which again is like the finishing climb isn't too hard, um, but this is actually a really really hard stage to be honest. Um, it's got twenty three, uh, it's got a really long climb up to Colleyanella, which is two thousand seven hundred meters. Will that happen? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not convinced, to be honest. Just because, you know, obviously the altitude. I don't know if it's going to be snow. That's the issue, isn't it? Snow. Um, then they got the Col de, uh, Col de which is again a really hard climb up to 2,400 meters. So those two early altitude climbs um, could really be the difference. You know, it, some people like altitude, some people don't. We don't really have any like Colombian riders. There's no Quintana. There's no Bernal, etc. There's no Rigo. Um, but, you know, certain people I know, often smaller people, it doesn't seem to affect uh, as much, maybe. Um, and potentially, you know, Garrett Thomas always seems to go right altitude, maybe Simon Yates as well. So they could really, you know, go on the attack there um, and it cause chaos. Because if you attack on the last couple of kilometers, the Colle Daniello, cries by crash down the Colle Daniello in uh, 2016, I think it was, Giro, um, and lost the pink jersey on that stage to Esteban Chavez. Uh, and obviously, you know, the descent was technical enough, so he, he won't enjoy that climb, that's for sure. His award, again, not mentally climb, 13k at 7%, but going up to 2,400 meters, that means you're spending, you know, 400 meters above, you know, altitude, above 2,000 meters, which is always, you know, the point where most pros will say it's hard. Uh, the climb to Mont Genève is not that hard. I've, I've done a fair few of these climbs, actually. It's really not that hard. And up to Sestra, again, it's, it's not crazy, but I just think at the end of the day, it could I it could be a really really uh tough day and obviously it goes up to 2,000 meters which isn't crazy again but it's enough that the last couple kilometers could really really hurt someone. Uh, and then I actually jumped back. I missed this one. I was like going through and so like, oh, this looks like him. why did I not include this? And I was like, yeah, I don't know why I didn't include this because I think this could be the queen stage. Is this or stage 20? Um, so yeah, stage 20 up to Sestri. I mean, if we look like these last ones are all really really like that's okay. It's a man's top finish, but it's not too hard. But this one to Lago di Can Cancano, um, it's going to be really hard, which involves a Silvio and then obviously up to Sestria, we've already done. And so that's a really tough week with a TT after Sestria. That's that's why I think it could be fireworks big time. But sometimes, you know, when it's really hard and actually the racing is less exciting because it's just too hard. People don't want to take the risk because the chance that they, they could lose time is, is, is just too high. Um, but this at uh, this stage just has all the recipe for a disaster, like in, in someone exploding straight out the blocks, got 14k climb at 6%. Like, OK, it's 6%, you know, in the draft, 25k an hour, they'll ride up there, 26k an hour. OK, you get a good draft, not going to lie. But if you're not feeling it straight out of blocks, you know, yesterday, the day before that um, was a, you know, a tough climb as well. Uh, up the Madonna di Campanillo, you know, you, you definitely could feel it. OK, then you've got a bit of Valley Road, then you've got 8.6k eight, 8 at 9%. Again, 9%, you know, they're only going 16 to 18 kilometers an hour, maybe, maybe like something like that, where their draft is significantly less. So again, it, it's somewhere where if a team wants to take it on, I can imagine, you know, someone like Ineos looking at this day, if G was behind and, you know, they felt he was climbing well. Um, or the opposite, if, if G's, you know, in the pink jersey, because he's done well in the TT, someone like Simon Yates, or maybe Mikey's if he's on a flyer, or someone like that, or Kreisweik, someone with a strong team, probably not Mikey's because NTT are quite a weak team, uh, could take it on and really string, string things out on this climb here. Obviously, it's still a long way um, until we actually get to the Stelvio. And again, will the Stelvio go ahead? No one knows. 2,700 metres is a long way up, even in like 
set i mean it's like going to be october so you know i really hope it is open because if if there's not obviously there'll be contingency routes they're not going to bit off the stage but it definitely won't be as exciting because going to the high altitude i mean you saw Colle Aliello was 2,700 and his award was 2,300. Um, and even this finish up to Sestria was 2,000. This going to 2,700, it, it definitely is one that which is, you know, need to be good TT rider, which obviously is 65 kilometers of TT, but also very good in the altitude. And I think, you know, for, for that reason, G is, is definitely going to be a, a big favorite for this. And maybe Chryswerk as well, um, because he's he's not bad in the TT either. But 25K at 7% is one of those climbs where it's just going to wear you out. Like, it's not going to be one of those climbs where it's brutally steep and people just get like, you know, it's going to be one of those climbs where 7%, you know, they ride 20 to 22k an hour, 7% climb on average, um, maybe a little bit faster, 23, um, but obviously altitude's pro pro probably more towards the 20 to 22k an hour. Um, and that, you know, the draft again, it, it's decent, you know, it's, it's, it's not insignificant, but it, it's not enough that you could sit in the whole time. If you're struggling, you're going to get found out because someone just needs to press it on maybe 2,300, 2,400 meters up, they start pressing one. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Like you can't respond. The descent off the Stelvio, again, pretty technical. Um, we'll be able to see as we scroll down. It, 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 obviously, the Stelvio is renowned for its, its hairpins, um, its technical descent. You know, when you're off the back, if you're someone like Nibali, you know, you could attack on this climb and descend and, you know, you could put a minute in, but only be like 20 seconds up on the, on the, on the, at the top, just because, it's a, it's a pretty technical finish. And then the climb to the line, again, is 9k at 7%. So again, nothing crazy, but I, I don't expect, you know, that that will be, it will be good because I think hopefully moves will go on the Stelvio, which is why I think this stage could be really, really, I'm um, well, I left it to last. Um, because I, I think, you know, it could be the day when from minute one, it's hard. And on the Stelvio, the differences will be made. And then they'll be extended over on the descent because it's technical. And then up the final climb again, I think, uh, well, I hope that there will be more and more gaps. And I think at this point, stage 18, we'll really get to see who's climbing well. Obviously, pretty late in the Giro, but I think, you know, you'll really get to know. Like, oh, fair enough, he's probably going to win the Giro. And I say it's a shocking, you know, stage nine, stage uh, 20 and 21. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, you can see here, it's uh, the Stelvio is is here um and then the descent to be fair it doesn't actually look that technical but i'm pretty sure it is i i think that no, sorry stelvio is here um and obviously the writing's all over it but the stelvio is generally is pretty technical descent um and these are the climbs so you can see this one here has got some pretty grim kilometers this is one i was picking out earlier team could really really launch it on and then the stelvio itself is it, it starts off flat and just gets steeper and steeper the last you know a couple of kilometers got some nine percent eight percent kilometers seven and a half percent kilometers um and i think that's going to be really hard and this is the last place climb to the line okay it's not brutally hard but you know there's a good section here which is eight seven percent obviously it flattens off a little bit before the final uh the final kilometer but again it, it's going to be a hard stage and i'd say it's definitely one that you really got to watch um so in terms of predictions obviously i always like to do my predictions for the gcys generally they they go okay uh but you know the tour i i, I didn't actually put a prediction for the tour um i did last year said burnout he won I did say Pogaccio wasn't doing well, but I, I, I can't admit that. I, I thought Pogaccio was going to win. If I'm going to go for the GC, i got to go Geraint Thomas. I can't see past him, to be honest. He looks on absolute flying form. Okay, it's very mountainous, but he does like the altitude. There's not too many crazy steep climbs. Not very many steep climbs. Suits Geraint Thomas, heavier rider. And a TT kilometers, with, he's going to have a strong team. He's going to have Dennis. He's going to have Ghana. He's going to have Dunbar, Tal Gagan Hart, Ben Swift. Maybe... Uh, Narvaez, he's looking really strong. Narvaez is going to do that. He's going to do his spring classics, but he hasn't done Bink Bank, so I think he could be going for the Giro. Um, so I think he's my favourite. I think Simon Yates as well. Obviously, it looked insane at Tadeno. And if I'm going to pick someone else who's going to do well, I think it could be Kreisvai. I, I can't see Nibali doing that well. His team's strong, but I, you know I just can't see it. And Kelderman again, um, I'm, I'm not so sure. Uh, so yeah, I think those are, those are my big picks, but I think Garrett Thomas is going to be the winner. Um, in terms of sprinter, I, I think Arno Demar is going to mop up a, a fair few stages, to be honest, because there's a lot of intermediate ones. Obviously, Hodge and, and Sagan's there, but Sagan's not looking good at all, uh, in my opinion. He, he's, he's really off the boil recently. Um, so I, I think Demar has been looking outrageous, uh, and I'm a big fan of Arno Demar. Um, so the, the French national championships he won was unbelievable, and uh, a really a good highlight of how, of how strong the man is. Um, for the breaks, I think Maznada's going to be up there. Uh, I can imagine some of the, the 
the smaller Italian teams like Andrioni Giacotto, Giacotto, I can't pronounce, Andrioni Giacotto, uh, they're going to have some decent people. Some of POs always look strong. Um, Bardiani and Chiesa, since they've had their uh, positive testing, they've definitely gone got worse. Um, when Perazzi and Co got kicked out the tour, I think it was 2017, or no, 2016, they started in Sardinia about two days before. That was, that was mint. Um, and obviously Visconti and the boys look pretty strong. Zardini, you know, he's Wackerman's looking good. He won Tour de Nouvelle Aquitaine. Um, but for the breaks, also Giulio Ciccone will probably try and win the blue again. Um, strong on man. And hopefully my boy Matt Holmes will get in a break and win another World Tour stage after his Tour Down Under success. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy. We're going to try and have more content um, about the Giro. Obviously, I go back to uni, so it's not ideal. Uh, but it is what it is. And um, I've got to stop being lazy. So we'll see you in the next one.